Continuing our series on hydraulic actuators, let's take a look at a telescoping cylinder that is gravity retracted or single acting. It's really only got hydraulic force in one direction and it's going to rely on the load and gravity to retract it. So we know it's a single acting cylinder because it only has one work port. So the oil will come from our pump through our directional control valve into this port and then also to get it out it'll come back through that same port through the directional control valve and go back to tank. So when we try and lift this load we send the oil in the directional through the contr uh, directional control valve in through the center of the cylinder. It's able to come through this bore here through and act on this surface area and still through the second bore act on the larger surface area. And because this is essentially two cylinders in parallel, equal pressure in both of them, the greater force will be created by the large first stage of our telescoping cylinder. So that's simply a pressure times surface area calculation. And when the force is enough to overcome the load that will be the, on the end of the cylinder, often these cylinders would have this be the bottom end and the barrel would be the top end to save contamination from getting in past the seals here. So it would basically be mounted in a vertical condition like that. So when we take a look at this single acting cylinder, our hydraulic oil comes in, acts on both surface area, the greater force is created on the large surface area. When it's enough to overcome the weight of the load, the cylinder will start to extend. It'll extend until it bottoms out where the piston makes contact with the cylinder head. When that happens, the pressure in the system from the pump will continue to rise, and that pressure rise will continue until the force created by this smaller surface area is enough to continue carrying the load. Often what happens on a dump body by now is that part of the load has started to shift rearward and so the dump body itself is actually, due to the tilting load, able to make the overall weight on the cylinder less. And so we're going to see that the second stage will then extend and that will extend until it makes contact with the cylinder head as well. So this end of this is a little snug, but it'll make it all the way through until we can see the piston make contact with the cylinder head. At that point, it's at its maximum extension. So pressure could continue to rise at the directional control valve until we hit relief pressure, and at that point, it will go over relief. To retract the cylinder, again using the directional control valve connecting this line back to tank, we will see the pressure leave or the flow leave out of the cylinder with gravity doing a lot of the job. Now what we see in stage retraction is really some of it's going to have to do with overall friction in the cylinder and the path of least resistance, whichever one's easier for it to go. The other one we can see is that the force being greater by the dump body will be able to move and move this small amount of oil quickly. So really a lot of it is to do with friction on the retraction side as well as just the path of least resistance for the oil flow to go. When we take a look at the seals, this particular cylinder was made with a piston that could go in both directions. I think it's really that they made the same piston for both the training aids, the double acting and the single acting. But where you see the seal here is really at the bottom. And that makes a lot of sense for a single acting cylinder because hydraulic pressure is only coming in, gonna try and get through this space right here. And it's gonna get behind this lip seal and that lip seal is gonna push out against the wall. And as it pushes against the wall, it's gonna seal. What we see on this piston is a wear band that acts as a bearing, it's a, a support for the weight of the cylinder itself. And so it's so that the piston doesn't rest directly metal on metal on the cylinder wall. Instead, it's going to slide on this Teflon ring. So often when we see uh, seal failures, the real root cause will actually be a wore out Teflon ring in the fact that the piston is now able to get sloppy inside the cylinder and that movement is what causes further damage up on the cylinder head seals up here. Our cylinder head has pressure seals, often they're O-rings with a hard plastic backing ring. 
an O-ring to seal the cylinder uh, rod against the cylinder head. And then we have our extrusion type seal, the dirt type seal on the outside edge right here. And that's to prevent any of that ingress contamination from dirt debris bonding to the cylinder. So it's really a scraping seal to knock everything else off. So it's not a high pressure seal so much as it really is preventing just external contamination from getting in to our cylinder. So again, this one's going to get mounted in a vertical condition, just like this. And we would see this in the vertical condition like that, so that we have dirt as it falls down, simply falls off the cylinder and doesn't get forced back in to those seals, the dust seals on the end.